Now on to clause two, Bell Park Encampment Update. Like you mentioned, Mike, it's important that we start to head towards a long-term solution. It would seem to me that this is not a facility that's going to be available to uh, clients or residents uh, on an ongoing basis. So does that not create additional problems in terms of establishing it at this location and then having to move it down the road? Is that you not see that as presenting a bit of a problem for you? Or would it not make more sense to, to identify a, a location where the program can continue uh, into the future? So do you envision a scenario where uh, we would ever be able to provide housing options that would satisfy every one of these residents? I guess we're searching, we being the city, is searching for a kind of one size fits all remedy. When you said that there's more people here, I just wonder how many more people are at Bell Park now? I think when you made the delegation at our last meeting, there was, I can't remember if it was around 30 or if it was closer to 40. So how many people are at Bell Park and how many children do you have? We have we have uh, what we have one child. We have we have about 42, 42 to 42 adults, 42 to 50 adults depending on the time, and we have uh, uh, three or four dogs. And I heard you and some of your neighbors mention this that you go through periods where three, four times a year, all of your belongings are lost. In whatever the solution is that the city offers, uh, should we have a comfortable storage? secure lockup system for your belongings until the situation is resolved? If we were to find housing for everybody there, uh, obviously the housing wouldn't be all in one location. It would be uh, across the city, most likely. Um, how many people, do you think everybody would take that opportunity up or would there still be some people who would want to live, like you say, in the bush? And, and, uh, just, and what do you mean by suitable and safe? Safe. Um, clean, clean, healthy, and um, and permanent, and permanent, and no, yeah, no bed bugs and, and no um, roaches, which seem to be a pandemic or just sorry, an epidemic in the city throughout housing as it is. We have um, so a couple of things. One, I think, is locally in terms of working with some of the organizations that are funded. Uh, by the provincial government, for example, has been um, has been really good. So we heard from the delegation earlier tonight, and those organizations have been, you know, uh, great to work with and, and very supportive and wanting to find solutions. Um, I think the the issue in terms of the complexity of the issue is not just something that's experienced in our community, but is happening obviously in other communities, urban centers. And I, I do um, think that it it does require to have more conversation at at the provincial level because it is across ministries. It's not just about about, um, Ministry of Health, but it's also about Ministry of Housing. So I know the mayor and I have had a chance to touch base and chat about that and, and talk about you know, how, how can we as Kingston maybe uh, join uh, with other communities and, and bring that messaging back to the province um, to try to find some solutions. So I think we've learned quite a lot as a council recently about uh, the problem of persistent homelessness in the city. Uh, and I think that the recommendation that we have before us this evening does a good job at using a compassionate approach uh, that ensures that provides the types of services that we were looking for with that, uh, with the amendment, with the, the proposal from the previous council meeting on the subject. Um, I do feel there are obviously lots of gaps. We've heard about that from, from delegations this evening, but overall, I'm really impressed by the approach, the health equity approach that um, has been adopted and that we have these partnerships in place that are really um, important for the long term, important to ensure the well-being of a large proportion of vulnerable populations here in the city. So I feel very positive about that and I'm really, really impressed by all the work that's gone on and, um, and happy that, that organization, organizations have come together and our staff have worked so hard over the last while um, to, to bring forward this um, shorter term, interim uh, recommendation or, or potential solution in the, in the shorter term. Uh, we do, I think, need to em embrace the important idea that housing is a human right. Because I think we definitely heightened some expectations at our previous meeting when we talked about uh, finding more permanent housing for, for the people. I don't believe at this time we've been able to offer anything other than a return to the shelter system to the residents at Bell Park. 
I think uh, one of the things as a community that we don't have a lot of um, and that we need more of, and in this case would be quite um, adequate, would be supportive housing. And the supportive housing that often will come in a setting where uh, it will be a, a large number of people residing in one building because the, the services and the supports that are required need to be present on a daily basis and not just a couple of times a week of, of drop in. Of course, I want to see a humane, compassionate solution to this. What I'm trying to demonstrate is the difficulty of finding permanent housing that works for anyone who happens to come along and when, when they've been homeless. And uh, it's very difficult work. And it's not something you can solve like overnight, obviously. Okay. Uh, at this point, then, we will call the vote on Clause 2. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried with Councillor Chappelle opposed. And then finally, clause number eight, integrated care hub permanent relocation option. I'll put my question this way. What uh, barriers what might there be uh, for this to be a permanent option for this service? There may be a strain on the neighborhood, the nearby neighborhood, uh, if there's a high number of users there, uh, but that remains to be seen and we have to put it somewhere. So, um, so I will support the recommendation. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say this is, uh, uh, welcomed and generally good. The, um, it's uh, because there needs to be a more permanent uh, location for the integrated uh, care hub. So I think I can certainly support that. The, um, I appreciated Councillor Stroud's remarks that this will put more stress on the neighborhood. There's a considerable amount of social housing in the neighborhood as it is. And to that extent, I'd just like to remind Council that uh, this location does not meet the city's general housing strategy of spreading out uh, social housing and, and, uh, and the like. Um, if you know the neighborhood, you'll know what I'm speaking about. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but we may be the only city our size that only has a single shelter provider. And in talking to some of the, uh, the Bell Park, whether you want to call them residents or campers, whatever, that is a problem. Um, there was a comment about um, that the needs were greater than the capacity, and I am wondering how, how much at this time, and, and, and are there any suggestions or ideas for that? How, what, um, how, how, how short are we? How, how big is the shortfall right now? You mentioned that um, in the shelter system that right now we have about 550 individuals. Of those, 132 are, are, uh, were out of the service manager service area. And, um, and, of, and so I just wonder, because these 132 people, they are still in Kingston. They are living here. Uh, they may be outside of our service manager area, but they are accessing our shelters and or, and or maybe even living on our streets and, or living in the rough. So I just wonder if we can, are there some, is, do we have some um, information regarding how much homelessness actually costs our community? Like how much does it cost? Um, when we don't give shelter or when we're reluctant, you know, to give shelter for people who live outside of our area and how much do overdoses cost? Like, what is the cost to community? Okay, so my next question was um, about the integrated hub system, a hub pilot project. So now um, you're going, you're going to be, at, council is going to be asked if we approve the uh, Montreal location. And, you know, we did hear the presentation about concerns and the lack of consultation, but it is important that we do recognize that a lot had to go, happen fast because of the pandemic. So there were reasons why uh, uh, we didn't consult as much as we should have. And I am glad to see in the report that that is going to be rectified. Um, but going back to the Montreal location, I just want to double check, is this still going to be a pilot? Is that going to be temporary? Because uh, there's also an extension now um, with the Tillery Park location, but are we talking temporary or are we talking long-term? I did go to the integrated hub yesterday and I had a great conversation with, uh, with the um, staff there and I have to say it really is impressive um, what, they're, what, they're, what they're accomplishing and we, we have known for many years that there are many people falling through the cracks so it's really fantastic that the agencies are coming together more and working together and really offering a model that's obviously uh, effective. But anyhow, you mentioned that 
there is support for landlords who offer housing. Um, and I wonder if you could expand on that because I did hear from some landlords that they had concerns with some tenants who kept destroying their property and they felt a bit frustrated with the city. So are we going to take a look and, at that as well and, and uh, in our review and also speak with, with landlords who are working with the city and trying to house people? This report is an attempt to hand over another 32 million of housing money to the construction companies for the construction of unaffordable housing as part, as part of a long-term plan to tear down social rent geared to income housing and replace it with housing that only the well-off can afford. What this report reveals is... is uh, we have no briefings. We do have a one petition, a petition bearing approximately six, uh, 19 signatures opposing the relocation of the integrated care hub to 342 Patrick Street and 661 Montreal Street was submitted to the office of the city clerk on September 14th, 2020 by John Yanakouris. Number six, integrated care hub update and extended use of artillery park. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. I, I believe this whole experience with Bell Park was uh, hard on city staff too, and they really worked hard to, 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 to do their best. And we know that uh, we've had um, concerns and we've had people living in the rough and homelessness people for so, so many years. And I think um, this whole experience is actually going to lead to something much better. I, I'm unable to support the, the amendment because frankly, I think it, the amendment gives the message to the community that we individually and collectively almost support the UN protocol. And the reality is that the UN protocol and we've all received dozens of emails from the public referencing the UN protocol as, uh, as something that we should abide by. And no, it isn't a binding piece of legislation on municipalities, but many in our community pointed out that it would be an embarrassment if we didn't support it. And for people, I know Councillor McLaren voted for the eviction on all seven, six votes that took place that night for amendment and moving a motion that basically says we almost support uh, the UN protocol on homelessness is really, really unfortunate. And I can't support that amendment for that reason. And when we had those discussions, many of us, I think, were hopeful that the timeline was going to be sufficient. Some of us didn't believe that it would be sufficient. And um, the unintended consequence of putting in place that timeline was that we failed to meet the UN protocol um, because we ended up, despite the fact that staff took an extra month and worked again on an hourly basis to try to find a solution that would allow them to implement our direction while still avoiding a forced eviction, which everybody in the community wanted. They didn't know where, no one wanted that outcome. And I, I don't think anyone can credibly make the case, facts are facts, if you've read the UN declaration, nobody can credibly make the case that we complied with the UN uh, wording. I mean, the, the wording is pretty clear. Under no circumstances should encampments be dismantled deliberately. It says that in, that's what the declaration is all about. You know, it, it doesn't matter to the public who did what, when, and how it happened. We all know uh, the next summer there's gonna be Homelessness still in Kingston. There's going to be more encampments, either at the same place or elsewhere. None of, none of it will be necessarily tied to what happened this year. It's just consequence of the pandemic and the housing situation in Kingston. We know it's coming. That's what this motion, the, the main motion tries to address. The amendment makes no difference to that. The amendment is, um, I don't know, it's, it's adding more negativity to an already very negative situation. And I don't think it's necessary. And uh, I didn't like that it was circulated by email to all of the council privately without the members of the public knowing this. That's in contravention to the rules of procedure and actually the mayor would be uh, in order to uh, admonish the member of council that did that. Municipalities are a function derived by provincial statute. As such, I find it quite frankly disturbing that we would try to tie ourselves to the United Nations, even though it's a non-binding protocol. And I did meet the, the, um, the person who did the report and wrote it when she came and did a presentation on homelessness in the city of Kingston. I found it very informative, but I caution that having the United Nations protocol 
is a real misnomer and many people misunderstand what this means as, as if you're imploring uh, a, sec a series of rights onto homeless people, which is really contrary to what we have in place under municipal legislation to be given to us through the province. And so I don't recall signing on to this United Nations protocol for the homeless encampments in Canada. And I think it is very dangerous to go down this path. We have to do a better job of learning about the experience of people who are experiencing homelessness and learn what it means to be, to have experienced trauma and understand why programs and services might not be meeting needs when someone is, is coming from that perspective. When, when what is being offered might sound good to us, but is further problematizing their situation or exacerbating their trauma. I hope we can learn. And the integrated hub is a great model. I would hate for it to, uh, to be built up only for us not to be able to continue that support because, um, and, and I recognize fully that we do need the help from other levels of government, um, but uh, the whole, in our entire community benefits when we look, at, look after the most vulnerable in our community. So um, just uh, not surprisingly, perhaps on the housing file, the, um, just a matter of clarification, I have a concern that with, will the city have uh, sufficient interim and permanent housing for the known homeless population in place at the end of October. As you know, the integrated care hub is continuing over the, the fall, winter, spring, and at least until July, at, at which point um, we will see what kind of funding and, and what we can continue to do. Uh, but those are all initiatives that are currently underway and will continue to be underway. Governments are not companies or households. We are a little bit different and austerity has not worked. It never works. There's a whole history of that, over 200 years of that. Um, it's not going to be a community if we're cutting back on spending as well. Like, just, we need to make our commitments in a sense. That money that we spend is taken out of people's pockets who can afford it. Property owners, and some of the biggest ones here too, are the ones who are standing to benefit the most from a reduced tax rate. When you take it out of theirs and you spend it, you're actually helping the local community. You're actually creating jobs. We've lost employer employees here in Houston in the city. That's money that can't that isn't spent within the global community. That's why austerity doesn't work. I mean we have to create the question for that. Economists on both sides of the left and the right spectrum have pointed that out. Um, it's the wrong thing to do. It just that's empirical data. Um, with regards to morality about this, property owners are the are the um, most well off people in the community and the programs that we're giving up are the ones that are for the most vulnerable. And in that sense, that's morally repugnant to me. So no, I'm in favor of um, making sure that we don't uh, that we uh, that we um, balance our budget, but also that uh, we keep on spending because that's what the community needs right now. What measures are, are taking place uh, to protect those who are suffering from mental health issues that are not uh, using um, drugs, uh, bluntly, uh, from those that are using drugs, so that the two populations can successfully be separated and managed accordingly, and encourage that those different populations, although sharing a space have the appropriate services they need. Uh, just to sp speak on honestly and openly, um, there, there's very few people that we do service that don't have um, complex needs and concurrent disorders. Uh, mm -hmm. So a majority of the people that are accessing uh, our program that have a diagnosed mental health uh, disorder are chronically using substances as well, unfortunately, to treat uh, that mental health disorder as well. So it's very, very, very rarely that we don't have somebody that is suffering from mental health disorders as well as a substance use disorder on top of it. You made a couple of comments about sustainability, and uh, I'm interested in it. It's early days. I recognize it's early, um, and we're not going to solve everything right away. But uh, I guess I'm wondering, is there any thoughts about that? And, um, uh, you know, with the building, how adequate is it? How, how much would it expand in, in three to five years? And, uh, but in the short term, um, or how do you reach out? How do you reach out to what, what we can do? Um, maybe I should know that, but I don't. So there you go. You know, if there's more that we can do, and I'm sure there is, uh, you know, we hope you'll come back to us. Thank you. That offered some insight into what you actually do, because when, uh, when, we, when we don't work in an environment like that, it's hard for us to imagine what your every day uh, may look like. So how many individuals do you think would use the space if more space was available? And behind that is I often hear that the ICH is not big enough to do the job. Uh, just listening to what you're saying about the complex nature of homelessness we have, and you described a variety of segmented groups uh, with, with the you know, military veterans and other homeless people as well, some that don't have a codependency on 
on drugs or a mental illness and then have that cold combination. Uh, and so those people who are not drug dependent but are very much outside of that scope, is there an opportunity for, for them to stay at the shelter or do they feel at risk from the other behaviors of, of the people who may have drug addiction issues? I'm just wondering, maybe I should know this, but um, uh, so we, if we, and we will probably approve the extension to the, the end of the year. Um, what, what's the ultimate plan? Like why uh, wouldn't it be a longer term? Um, because we're not, we're going to have to keep renewing it unless we had another location. So I just wonder about the thinking behind uh, the short term. Well, this is a, a 10 month or whatever extension. So um, is it always uh, open to another location? Is this a trial um, or until something else comes along or what? Um, because we're investing so much in, the, in that property. I just wonder what the thinking is behind the scenes. And I should add that Elf Canada has reviewed the current location and has approved it. Will the actual cost be presented in such a way that it's, it's clear and concise to how much it would cost and how much that would be to the taxpayer if we are looking to maybe support this locally? You know, most of the behaviors, I mean, judging by what I've seen on the police reports, there's, there's not, um, there isn't violent calls or calls to the police or anything like that that are happening so much other than a fight per, perhaps between two clients, but there isn't violence to any of the residents that's occurring. Uh, I think more it's just we're getting, you know, the issues of trespass and concerns about behaviors, erratic behaviors and those kind of things. Thank you, Worship. Uh, one, one of the questions that uh, come to mind when I looked at this report was there wasn't any mention of a 24 hour warming site in the winter. And I, I know you could argue that they could go to the integrated care hub, but some people may not want to be associated with, with you know, a safe injection site. So is there any plan? What I'm trying to do is address the numerous neighborhood issues with businesses and with residents that have arise and are continuing to arise. And I know of at least one or two councillors that know that this is going on and um, have caused some, something of a, a real difficulties for the people that live in the immediate vicinity of the ICH. Um, notwithstanding, the ICH appears to be doing some good work. And there is and continues to be, for instance, for example, a considerable amount of garbage and waste being produced way beyond what was there before and even way beyond what was there last year or even six months ago. Okay, and um, it's costing the city a considerable amount of money. It's not that staff haven't been trying to do this all along and some good work has been done and some work re regarding security, for, for example, fencing along the back of Rideau Street in Montreal because of people invading backyards and taking things and stealing them and the whole nine yards. So that has been, that has, those things have been done, but the, but the situation is, is still is deteriorating. It's not getting, better. I do think the ICH is doing something worthwhile, but I'd like it proven to me. But I do want to basically point out to Council that uh, for 2022, we would obviously allocate the funding and continue the operations because otherwise it would be closing in January. And I know that we really rushed to get this site and skipped a whole bunch of planning processes in place. And so we don't have an understanding of even how safe this site is. I understand there are issues of high mercury issues on this property, hydrogen sulfide gas, 90 plus other contaminants at high uh, high levels of even mercury compounds, just because of the nature that business is used, including DDT, which is a banned pesticide I'm sure you're familiar with. The integrated care hub, it was a pilot project. I don't want to put any more money into it. From like my perspective, it has been very expensive. Whatever. I just don't want to put any more money towards the integrated care hub of everything. The emails I've had over the last year in its current location, like, I just don't want to do anything more towards it. A couple of things. First of all, uh, in 2020, Kingston was the only community in Ontario where the rate of opioid deaths went down. So I am quite sure that the ICH had something to do with that. Uh, I have met with the minister. She is had lots of great questions. She would like to come down and have a look at the hub. Uh, and she has uh, personally implored us to keep it going and not to, not to shut it down. And if we were to shut it down, um, we need to think about what services would we put in place that would replace it. I think just ending the ICH is just simply not an option. Anyway, I just don't want to put any more money towards the integrated care hub from the property tax dollar base. Thank you.
on the uh, integrated care hub, okay, so why would a municipality pay its own budget money, its own money collected from taxpayers, taxpayers' money, for uh, supports for um, these uh, individuals that do have access to other supports that are provincially funded. Now that it's, it's, it's coming out of our budget, I know it's a temporary thing, but it, it really, you know, it's throwing, it's throwing our, our good money perhaps after bad because we haven't really had the results from the existence of the ICH that we would like. Let's be honest about our reality check here. We've had a COVID outbreak. We've had, uh, you know, multiple security breaches. We've had all kinds of stories uh, there. I mean, it's a nightmare to, to manage, I'm sure. The folks that work there, I'm, I'm sure the most dedicated, but, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to fund it forever. So either we say no now or we say no later. Um, the previous uh, speaker mentioned that there are so other services available if we were not to fund the ICH. Um, I just wonder if we if we could respond to that. Where would people go? Where would the clients go? And what could we expect if we were not to actually um, vote in favor of this uh, number one? Um, so I think that is definitely a, the, the one million dollar question. But currently, there is a, a different type. There's different types of clients that are utilizing the integrated care hub services. Um, some clients uh, may, you know, ultimately need to move into <clears throat> sorry traditional or supportive housing solutions that we obviously, as as we know, don't have. Uh, an ample supply of in this community. Um, we also have clients that, <clears throat> sorry, um, have, um, uh, because we are currently still at a lower shelter capacity due to the COVID uh, regulations, you know, it, it has been helping, you know, some clients to have, you know, a, a roof over their heads uh, over, overnight. But again, we, we all know that there is limited services in all these different areas for people to, to move into. But we can't close this because we just heard from staff that we don't have the services to give to people and more people will die on our, on our streets. Um, so.